for a new beginning by John Donahue. <clears throat> In out of the way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the safety of se the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered would you always live like this. Then the delight when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not, let, not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure, hold nothing back, learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses that the world awaits you. Now let us quiet our hearts and our minds. Take a deep breath, settle into your seats. I want to talk to you a little bit about intentional noticing. It's a mindful practice that allows us to more deeply connect to our immediate environment. When we take the time to purposely monitor what our senses are telling us, it reminds us that we are only a small part of a much greater whole. And it helps us expand our sense of self. This is a practice we can do anytime, anywhere. What do you see? What do you hear? Smell, feel, taste. We were asked to do this uh, on our trip on the Camino, and I share with you some of my own observations in hopes that you will experience a little bit of our journey yourself. I invite you to close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you, and try to picture what is being described. On the Camino, there was the smell of wet, mossy rocks, ancient earthedness, pine tree groves, manure, hay bales, sharp like the smell of olives, wafts of my own scent growing stronger the closer I get to a shower. The sounds of hola, morning doves cooing, roosters crowing, birds chirping, stream gurgling, cows mooing, dogs barking, buen camino. The feel of sand path, stone path, dirt path, paved path beneath my feet. The heat of uphill quads, hot sweaty strides, cool breeze relief, pack up, Pack down, jacket off, jacket on. Soapy shower, contented joy. May these moments of intentional noticing and reflection strengthen our connection to ourselves, to each other, and to our Mother Earth. May it be so. Tu eres el camino. You are the camino. You are the walk. I embrace this journey with an empty mind, a spacious place to take in all the path would present me. I already knew from my long hikes, intended to prepare my body, that my attempts to push through pain 
focused on the destination impacted my connection to the experience. And it took longer to recover from it. When I wanted to ask myself if I was ready, I reminded myself to remain curious rather than fearful. I did not really know if I was ready, but I did know I was not alone. I know this wonderful community was going with me both spiritually and, and for some, physically. And I knew the Pellegrinos of El Camino, whom I had never met, would expand that community. It was time to take the first step on a new path among the ancestors, the travelers who came before me. Catch and release, breathe, feel the path, feel my whole body, not just the hurt, take in my surroundings and just be. Buen Camino, a gracious nod to those along the way intentionally connected to each step each stride. This greeting was fuel for those of us pulling ourselves along those first few days, the longest days. Always the hardest parts open to forests with fern-filled floors, pastures of calm grazing cows and sheep, stone villages with beautifully tended gardens. The shorter hiking days left us with an odd wanting to still be walking. Our senses wanted more. Starting each day in silence and having a whole day of silence to enhance our awareness of it all. Feeling our feet kiss the earth as encouraged by Thich Nhat Hanh. Along a stretch of forest path, we encountered a woman attaching strips of paper with poems and other writings to hearts. She said she was making them for love. This is what mine said. Yo puedo, hoy recupero mi poder, hoy supero mis miedos, hoy tomo en control de mi vida, which translates to, I can. Today I get my power back. Today I overcome my fears. Today I take control of my life. I will take this message and so much more into my life, enhanced by El Camino. Reflections on the Camino from an Aging Pilgrim. <laughs> First, a definition. A pilgrimage is a journey often into an unknown or foreign place where a person goes in search of new or expanded insights about their self, others, nature, or a higher good through the experience. It can lead, it can lead to personal transformation after which the pilgrim returns to their daily life. I had always wanted to walk the Camino de Santiago, not for a specific purpose, but because I, it was there. I love walking and learning in motion in the natural world. And time was growing shorter to take on a physical challenge. I did not think deeply about a spiritual challenge in advance of the trip. Instead, I focused on walking and meeting the physical challenges. 14, day, 14 miles the first day, we said? The spiritual challenges came later. I'm relatively new to the congregation and had not developed the deep relationships that come with shared experiences and challenges over time. Walking all day in twos and threes and fours, I learned more about my fellow pilgrims and new UCA and gained insights, some prepared, some incidental, from Reverends Anastasia and Rob. These connections helped me to grow deeper into my own life and to become more intentional about living every day. Daily sessions of guided meditation and sharing brought me closer to my fellow pilgrims. I also participate in the Soul of Aging group, which focuses on living in the last part of the journey. For me, the issues from that group and the issues in the Camino are similar. 
What do I want to do to take forward in my life? What do I need to let go of and continue on my way? Walking the Camino, I began to learn to let go. Good morning. Good morning. My journey on this Camino was very interesting. Um, I'm Jane Kerrigan's sister. She called me one day and said, hey, you want to go to Spain and Portugal? Sure, why not? I'll go. Um, we're going to walk El Camino. OK, El Camino. I had no idea what it was. But I agreed to go. And um, we started packing and planning this and planning that and getting everything, everything all set and excited. And then at one point I learned we have a day of silence where we walked, I think that day was 15 miles and we were not to say a word. And if anyone knows me, I'm a blabbermouth. So I knew it was gonna be hard for me to do. Um, I decided I would walk it by myself because that way I could keep silent. Um, through my walk, I first started off with uh, just meditations. Anything that came to mind, if it was positive, I put it in deep in my heart. If it was negative, I just kind of let it go. Then I started singing hymns, um, started saying prayers, and that was probably long about maybe hour two, and I had quite a few more to go. Um, so I decided, well, let's write something. And um, we used to sing with my mom, and in the church I was at previously, the Lord's Prayer. So I started singing the Lord's Prayer. And I thought, you know, there's a pilgrim's prayer in this. Um, I'm not going to sing it for you because my singing voice is not that great. Um, but the pilgrim's prayer. O El Camino de Santiago, guide us along the way. Thy divine light keeps pure our might on earth and as our souls transition. Give us the strength to keep walking on and forgive us our swears as our feet forgive their blisters. <laughs> then lead us through night's darkness when day safaris take longer than expected. For thine is the forgiveness and the gratitude and the solace for everyone. Namaste. I'm Jane Kerrigan. And my Camino was destined to be different than yours. We all trained, some more than others, each in our own way and each to its own good. We ate right, ordered the perfect pack, and bought the right shoes. We designed the vacation to maximize the trip. We traveled with our favorite companions, but we each are destined to walk our path, our own path, and to experience our own Camino. Mine was def des destined to be different. I worried about Dale and his bike. I should have been paying attention to the sore throat that was building in me. The very first hill should have told me what I needed to know, wheezing, struggling to breathe. Dale came straggling in on his bike hours later, having walked up hills most of the way and alone. His heart held out, his muscles were sore, and his frustrations beyond high. 
I felt for him. And then I turned to me. I tested positive for COVID. The kicker was that I had fever and felt I should test. Sure enough, this was not a regular cold, not a sore throat from sleeping with my mouth open. And from there, everything changed. Masks, of course, but also no continuing on the walk. None of my colleagues from whom I had already learned to gather great support would be with me. I would miss them. I watched as they passed my door, walking hats, packs, and sticks in place, giving me looks of condolence. Now I would need to begin my own path, hoping beyond hope that I had not given the scourge to anyone else. I needed to negotiate staying at the hotel extra days, fearing the government of Spain was going to impose a quarantine. So I called them, but they said I needed to go to the clinic and figure out the need to quarantine. Well, the clinic number didn't work, so I went there. No one, shut down tight. Luckily, the pharmacist was in and said, if I was not sick enough for the hospital, I only needed to wear a mask. Shh, no quarantine. Yay, back to bed. I slept most of that day. Dale had also tested positive, but was less symptomatic than me. Carrie and Jamie put their doctor hats on and carefully prescribed meds. They had brought some antivirals with them. We both felt better by the next day. So that day was designated as bike retrieval day. It was clear we would not continue the walk. The bike people were wonderful and would pick up the bike, wishing us good health as the most important. The Camino will always be there. Well, we all set intentions for our walk, what we hoped to learn and what we would leave behind. No matter now what I said then, the Camino had something to teach me and would not be stopped. The Camino wanted me to know that the best laid plans are just that, plans. My good friend Sally says that one makes plans so that you have something to change. <laughs> and that is what I did. So what do I learn from this? Well, humility first. The need to rely on the wisdom of others and the support of others who carry me and Dale in their hearts. And then I learned that my path, my Camino, is to negotiate all that I need to do to get through this. This is not the work of someone else. This is mine to do, to get us through COVID and on to Santiago, where we can catch up with fellow Pellegrinos. Despite not making the walk, I believe I am one. I believe I am one even though the frustration is high and I feel like I have failed. I had intended to meditate on our silent day, the idea that I am enough. And despite not having walked the Camino, I have proof that I am just what I need, just enough to see me through this. What is your Camino? What tribulations do you have to negotiate? Though your Camino may be different than others, it is a Camino, nevertheless. The Camino will always be there. About six months ago, I started to collect my gear and to prepare my mind and body for the walk. And I wondered where the journey would take me. I planned to reflect on accepting, if not embracing, all of who I am, 
the good and the not so good, and how to courageously live out my remaining life, embracing opportunities. I look forward to getting to know others in our group, knowing that there would be plenty of time for sharing. So I had a dual purpose, one centered internally and the other externally on our on the community, Camino community that I was walking with. We all walked together and often alone. My focus changed as we walked. Hearing my own voice and the stories of those in our group and those of others on their Caminos, I felt more connected to our shared journey and our shared humanity. As I walked, I reflected on the eighth principle and the parallels to the journey I was on. At UUCA, it took over six months of preparation to educate the congregation about the eighth principle. That was a huge undertaking. And yet, after its passage, our journey well, and our work was really just beginning. What did the eighth principle mean for me and for the congregation as a whole? For me, I wasn't sure how it would impact my faith. It prompted greater reading and exploration of our country's history and UU history. I specifically listened to the stories of people of color. Understanding the full meaning of the eighth principle has been and is a journey for me and I believe for many in the congregation. At UUCA, we are examining how we operate and working to change systems and processes to become the beloved community where we can all bring our whole selves to church and our life together. Building that community requires listening to each other's stories and what is important to all of us. That is the worthy Camino we are on. We are all on our own individual paths to address racism. And I believe there is a congregational journey we are on as well. And I, for one, am eager and committed to journey with the congregation to live into that eighth principle. May we walk together. Hola. Hola. I'd first like to thank the Reverends Anastasia and Rob Hardys for coordinating this community, which turned out to be a real life blessing for me. We were asked to set an intention, as people mentioned earlier, uh, many months ago. My intention then was to attempt to walk 70 miles the year I turned 70 and to reflect over those years with gratitude. As I walked, I came upon some simple but yet valuable realizations that pertain to life and the journey we here at UCA are on. Some of these ahas are, it's good to look back, but don't do it for very long. You lose forward progress and steady footing if you don't keep your focus in front of you. Some of my mistakes and life tragedies, and by 70 years, we all have a lot of them, have been delved into enough. I was surprised to find that some of what I thought were the most profound needed no more ruminating. My present interactions right there were of more value than reliving those ups and downs. So important for our church. 
change your socks. <laughs> Some of the longest days of 14 and 15 miles had times of very tired feet. Merely changing your socks could make the journey so much easier. <laughs> Might we not consider small changes in our church life as we hit challenges? Not everything has to be epic evolution. Look back, not to remember hard times, but to check on your fellow journey folks. Not just your friends. Are we checking on someone in our church that we don't normally interact with? Interaction builds relationships. We were all a part of the group, but when COVID hit, I was one of them. Relationships were built with others that I may not have forged <laughs> otherwise. Those of us who had COVID walked separately together. I believe we need these interactions to build the beloved community. I'm going to look for more ways to interact with others I may not know as well. Short rests are restoring. Do we take appropriate rests in our church work? Those rests create a different perspectives and energy. And last, if changing your socks didn't do it, change your shoes. <laughs> I listened to a fellow traveler from another part of the world and she told me this tidbit. Just change your shoes for a couple hours. Wear your sandals for a couple hours. It makes all the difference. And I thought of our eighth principle for it and how you should listen to those who have already journeyed. I ended my Camino grateful for my 70 years and grateful for the support of my church community. Buen Camino. Thank <laughs> you.